will the environment lose to the economy in 2009? It's been losing for decades. According to this survey, most expect the status quo. But if we want change bad enough, we have to make it. That's why I made this video, to help people create solutions where the planet wins, the economy wins, and people win. Until last year, the economy looked good. But Earth's biodiversity dropped 30% in 35 years. The purple at the bottom is humanity's carbon footprint. Carbon alone puts us past nature's capacity to regenerate. Here's the main trend behind global warming and climate change, rising CO2. This mother of all environmental problems is accelerating. When did atmospheric CO2 rise the fastest? Since the Kyoto Protocol was signed. We have climate treaties to stabilize CO2 in the atmosphere, but the treaties have no atmospheric targets. And as for atmospheric results, CO2 has never been further from stabilization. Our climate treaties could be great, but they're letting us down. It's time we put an atmospheric target at the center of our climate and economic policies. It's time to get talking about the most important number on the planet. The most important number on Earth. 350. Right. 350. Science says 350 parts per million is the upper limit for safe concentrations of CO2 in the atmosphere. This is the atmospheric target humanity needs to aim for. In the past eight months, people and even countries have started to promote 350 as a climate target, a hopeful trend that anyone can support simply by adding their voice. Atmospheric CO2 surpassed 385 last month. We left 350 behind in 1988. Arctic sea ice will soon be gone in the summers. It could happen as early as 5 to 13 years from now. That's just one crazy example of the impacts that are happening on this planet. You're looking the problem straight in the eye. It's not cars or light bulbs, furnaces or air conditioners. It's not coal miners, oil executives, or the tar sands. The main problem is what I'm doing right now, freely and lawfully. I'm using fossil fuels for energy. I want to stop using fossil fuels. I'm trying to figure out how. It will be easier and faster when more people want the same thing. We've got to get CO2 back to 350. What's that going to take? Two giant steps. First, CO2 needs to stop going up. To do that, we need an alternative energy shift so massive that global CO2 emissions get cut in half. Second, we need to get from peak CO2 back to 350. We have to rewire the world economy for alternative energy. Then, CO2 emissions can become history. And we need to find ways of pulling CO2 out of the atmosphere. Rising CO2 isn't our only problem. We need to solve more than one thing at a time. When our economies need cash flow, we can use economic stimulus to build the post-carbon future. I can help you? I sure hope so. Economic meltdown? Peak oil? Global warming? Your dosage is up. I know, and I can't get my CO2 levels down, and my methane's really starting to bubble. I'll get the solar panels. The reality is grim, 
But 350 offers reason for hope. We can't predict how things will play out, but it's exciting to imagine what can. Imagine countries rallying around 350 at the Copenhagen Climate Conference. Imagine the news story of the year about a number that makes life safer for people around the world. This is a story with legs. With 350 as a shared target, people of all backgrounds can arrive at the same destination faster than anyone imagined. In 2008, science gave the world a gift. In 2009, leaders in Davos can be among the first to acknowledge this gift from science by folding 350 into discussion on matters of ethics, politics, society, environment, and the economy. This target is universally relevant because the need to preserve climate stability touches every issue every corner of the planet, every life. In Davos and beyond, please hear and think and say this number, this one beautiful number. 350! 350! 350. 350! 350! Three fifty. 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 Three fifty.